So here we are, day five of the five day fasting challenge. I wanna congratulate everyone who took the plunge, jumped right in, and got started with their prolonged fasting. That's really what this five day fasting challenge is all about, folks. It's about preparing you for the next step, and I'll talk about that in another video. Now, this five day fasting challenge started with your very first nomad. That means on Monday night, you guys went to bed without eating any food. Followed up by a small break fast on Tuesday. So we go nomad to omad. No meal on Monday, one meal on Tuesday, and then many of you chose to skip that meal and push it off until Friday. Uh, but then others of you got started on the next two nomads. Nomad Wednesday, Nomad Thursday, Friday, Omad. So if you broke fast earlier in the week, uh, congratulations on doing that first Nomad, and now you have gone two days, and you're on your third day here without eating. It's amazing when you break that fear and you see you can do it. Really, this, what this is about is encouraging you and inspiring you, showing you your strength and allowing you to uh, try something you've never tried before. And now we're at the end of this. And before we go on and talk about how to integrate fasting into your lifestyle, take your fasting to the next level, what I really want to emphasize is the importance of how you break your fast. So you'll see here, I've got some tips for breaking your fast. Uh, some of you decided to fast the entire five days. This is super critical for you. Some of you guys decided to uh, take that OMAD, that one meal a day on Tuesday, and then the past two days, you did two nomads. So that's really, you keep pushing it. It keeps long, getting longer and longer. And the longer your fast, the more mindful you need to be during your break fast. So I've got some tips here that I'd like to share with you. I'm gonna dive right in. Uh, tips for breaking your fast. So the very first tip here is to drink lemon water. This is a tip I learned from Simland. What you wanna do is stimulate the digestive juices a little bit. Uh, so by drinking some lemon water, you get like uh, stomach acid. It starts to prepare you, prepare your stomach. The barren, blank stomach, clean slate that hasn't received any sustenance in many days. Now, get stimulated with a little bit of lemon water. So you can go ahead and uh, drink a, a glass of purified water with some lemon squeezed in it. And that's, a, that's the way to start getting in the groove of food. Number two, uh, just a tip for when you do break your fast, uh, chew slowly, don't gorge. Oh, I gotta harp in on this one a little bit. So when I began the process of prolonged fasting, of course, uh, like many of you, I get to the end of my fast and I'm ravenous. And I've discovered that, uh, of course, the type of hunger that you, uh, what typically happens or what has happened with me is I break the seal and then I don't want to stop. So, you know, it's time to break the fast. I had that first little meal. I'll talk a little bit about some of my favorite meals, that first little meal. And then all of a sudden it's like the floodgates have opened and I just want to <laughs> like a fire hose of food in my belly. And that's, I did that the first one <laughs> and maybe two times because uh, I started to experience some pain. Wasn't a good idea. Um, I knew it wasn't a good idea, but I just, I, I was, it was uncontrollable, emotional, and I just wanted to eat. And so uh, I've learned the hard way, and that's why I'm offering you this advice. It is in your best interest, no matter how much you want to, start gorging, especially on junk food, right? I mean, that, my assumption is that we're living a healthy lifestyle here, and that we're not, we're not going to Burger King, Wendy's, Jack in the box, all that kind of shit. My assumption is that we're, well, we're eating whole foods and we're eating mostly things that we prepared at home. All right? So I don't, wanna, I don't think I need to have that conversation with you. But anyway, the point is, even if it is healthy food, like I would just eat a whole bag of freaking nuts. Quote unquote healthy. Paul Saladino tells me you shouldn't be eating those, shouldn't, eat, shouldn't be eating vegetables at all. But uh, it depends on who you ask. That's why I don't know nothing. <laughs> 
anyway, so yeah, I'd be eating a whole bag of nuts and I know they have anti-nutrients and phytic acid and uh, one of the things that I'll make another video about this is uh, the way Colleen prepares nuts so that they're easily digestible. But either way, I was gorging and I, and I advise you not to do so. Also, uh, chew slowly. When I broke that first day, that first 10 day fast, my first 10 day, 10 day fast, or even before that when I was doing like five days and stuff, uh, and, and with the experience of gorging and hating myself for doing so, I began to take a zen, a mindful, appreciative, sensational approach to that first meal by really slowing down my chewing. I'm a fast chewer. Sometimes I don't even swallow. You know, it's just my nature. Um, <laughs> but if I'm mindful, it isn't my unconscious nature. Uh, so I began taking my time and like a wine or cigar connoisseur, indulging in all the nuances and intri intricacies of what I'm tasting, you know? And one of the things I like to break my fast with, right, is, uh, is liver, liver worst. I love liver worst. And I would just, I would taste the organ. You know how it's got that almost like that uh, iron taste to it? Taste it, appreciate it. And all the while, you know, I'm chewing this liverwurst, I'm thinking about my gratitude for the animal that gave its life to nourish my body. You know, I gotta be honest, it's not a typical approach for me. Uh, that's why I have to be steadfast and disciplined with my meditation and prayers and, mindful th and th mindfulness and things like this. These things don't come naturally to me. So um, fasting has increased, increased my sensitivity in that regard and has brought up uh, the sentiment of appreciation every time I'm eating that, that first meal. So chew slowly, chew slowly, taste it, baby. And then uh, start small. So here's, here's a strategy for eating. Of course, you started with your lemon water. Uh, Sim also says that, you know, it's a little bit of apple cider vinegar is a good idea. You know, it depends on what you want, but you got that first little drink. Uh, and then we're going to have that small meal first where you're going to chew slow and don't gorge. And I think it would be a good idea for you to portion out that meal first and then stick with it. If, because if I don't portion it out, then it just becomes a refrigerator aid. So portion out what you're about to eat. And I'll talk a little bit about that in, in a moment. And then give yourself an hour before the big meal. Uh, there's a lot of good reasons why you want to do that. Uh, if you haven't eaten like five days straight, and you put that food in your stomach, you want to make sure that everything's cool, everything feels all right, it's digesting easily, properly, and, uh, and then you can proceed. So, starting small. So this very first meal, uh, I sort of take a, I take a hybrid approach because you know I'm a, I'm a big fan of Arnold Eric uh, and his rational fasting. Uh, I don't love his idea on fruitarianism. And you know, we should all become fruitarianism. Um, so I take some of what he has to offer and I blend it with what I've learned from more of my, the more contemporary experts on fasting like Dr. Fung and, uh, and of course Sim, I talked about him and some of the other guys that I, Cole Robinson. Uh, Cole, I haven't, I haven't read or watched too much of Cole's stuff as a term, uh, in terms of breaking a fast, but um, of course Dr. Fung talks about high fat, high protein or moderate protein low carb meals. So by the way to combine the two, especially with this first meal, is uh, Dr. Arnold Eret. Uh, I keep calling him doctor, but he wasn't even a doctor, professor. Professor Arnold Eret um, suggests that we break our fast with food that's going to stimulate a bowel, bowel movement. Because now what we want to have happen, especially if you hadn't been doing uh, enemas and stuff throughout your fast, like I did. I did two enemas. Um, you got a whole lot of stuff in there that's kind of putrefying and hanging out in there that because the peristalsis had slowed down because you weren't eating, a lot of times the food just sits there. And it's been sitting there for, the, for, for a few days in your colon. And that may be part of the reason why you feel like shit. That's why I suggest, like I said, enemas, salt, salt flushes. And also I'll make a whole video about that another time. But we want to get the bowels moving again. We want to get them moving again. So starting with a salad, a salad with some 
salad with some oils and protein and so my favorite is salad and sardines so sardines are high in of course omega-3 fatty acids uh, and the uh, you know the essential fatty acids that are typically found in fish you can find in sardines plus a little bit of protein and the salad so it gets it gets the bowel stimulated he also recommends uh, things like prunes stew prunes and stuff like that uh, you can do that I haven't it's not a bad idea I don't think it's a bad idea um, but all with the intention of getting the bowel stimulating okay so no, some other suggestions for that first small meal first little breakfast is uh, some eggs I want to eat a little bit of eggs uh, you know we're warning to keep keep the uh, glycemic index low so if you're gonna have like fruit I'd say have like a green apple uh, and some berries green apples and berries uh, are my fruits of choice because they're low glycemic and you might want a little bit of fruit you might be feeling dry in the mouth so you want that crispy juicy sweet fruit you could do that also too so really the whole point is to eat a little something low glycemic that gets the bowel stimulated and then you want your big meal one hour later and uh, one of the things that Arnold Eric talks about in rational fasting is to eat until you poop just keep eating so um, as far as what to eat like I say you know I lean towards Simland's advice and Dr. Fung's advice on keeping it low sugar low carb higher fat high protein so you want to get some of that in there sometimes I'll have a steak steak and eggs salad and sardines and then steak and eggs that's like my one of my go-to's I love that salad sardines steak and eggs uh, but then you want to keep eating and his su suggestion is to avoid this idea that you should creep back into eating by over the course of you know several days just taking little pieces right because there is that advice uh, which is I don't know which one is right or wrong but I subscribe to and have experienced and, in, and appreciate the advice of Eric which is now it's time to gorge <laughs> your that first meal it's okay like I said you, you just want to stimulate a second meal now you want to just you want to eat until you poop when you poop now you know things are starting to move again and that's really what we, we if you start eating and you stay constipated you're not going to be happy you're not going to be comfortable and you're going to get bloated so the whole idea here is this, it's a big meal let it be a big freaking meal man this is not a time to watch your calories not a time to eat junk food either there's another word on junk food cookies candies cakes ice cream all that kind of shit we don't eat that right? there's no place for that in here and that doesn't mean that you can't but I don't make the assumption that you're, you're gonna be eating junk food right like I said before fast food junk food anything like that we won't, we won't, eat, we won't eat healthy foods I know those uh, IIFYM guys out there who are like no you can eat donuts and cookies and coke I'm not a fan of that you can do that if you want number five keep it keto baby like I said look if you fasted for five days or if you just took the fasting five-day fasting challenge and and took a break in between like I suggested there's a good chance that you've already achieved ketosis it usually takes about 72 hours so right now like if you broke fast on Tuesday right around this time maybe around this time you're watching this video you're actually now starting to creep into ketosis as opposed to someone who started a ketogenic diet 10 days ago then they get into ketosis you because you fasted and you kept the carbs low with your with your little break fast there is a high indication a good indication that you have uh, clicked over into using ketones fat for energy uh, and also there's a good chance that autophagy is uh, stimulated and so your body is really going through this deep regenerative process and we want to kind of keep it going the best that we can now whenever we eat any food autophagy is, is pretty much stopped or not any food but most foods uh, autophagy is, just, is stopped but ketosis can keep going and if you're here uh, because you want to experience the myriad of benefits that are associated with a ketogenic diet 
That includes fat loss. A lot of people go into ketogenic diets because, well, I've heard people or I know people personally who have healed and managed their cancer with a ketogenic diet. You know, so it could be anything from needing to lose fat to healing yourself from cancer. You know, and, and I advise you to do your own research on those kinds of ideas. But keto, ketosis is a, um, it's a powerful state, powerful physiological state. And we, we, may wanna, we might want to stay there for a little while. Um, I'll talk later about how I'm uh, rolling this fasting period into my strongman training and how I will strategically keto these, uh, these next few weeks. So keep it keto, friends. We don't want to spike that insulin and start all over again. Uh, limit water. Now, you've been drinking lots of water. You've been lot, drinking lots of snake juice. You've been drinking black coffee. You've been drinking. Um, now that it's time to break that fast, we want stomach capacity. We want, as much, we want to be able to put food in the stomach. We don't want to waste space with water. You're not going to dehydrate, especially if you've been drinking this whole time. You're not going to dehydrate. But, uh, but you can definitely dilute and we don't wanna, we don't wanna do that. So we wanna have your water maybe an hour after you eat or something. Make sure you've been drinking water up to the time you eat. But uh, now that it's time to feast, keep the water to a limit. And then finally, I would love to get your feedback and I would love to see your results. And I would love to know how you did or how you intend to do on this five day fasting challenge. If you got before and after pictures, you had a mystical experience, whatever you have that you want to share with me, I'd love to receive. And so uh, I put an email address here where you can send me anything uh, result related. You know, I, I really want to hear from you guys who have actually stepped in and did this. If you got questions about five day fasting challenge, uh, I'm not going to answer it for you. You know why? Because I made going on seven videos about this right now and if you click the link now below uh, it'll take you to a page where you can register and I'll send you a free copy of my five-day fasting challenge uh, PDF ebook so uh, all your questions can be answered there and of course every once in a while you know I'll go through the Q&A down at the bottom answer questions and of course finally I do my live stream workouts where I answer super chats so you know there's always that there for you but here Elliot at strengthcamp.com. That's Elliot with two L's and two T's, y'all. E double L double I E L L I O T T. At strengthcamp.com, send me your pictures, send me your testimonials, send me your love, because I love you. I love engaging with you in these types of projects. Got so much more, so many cool things on the way. And I'll see you then. Have a great day. Done.